after discussion videos, reviews of leaked cards, mail day openings, and combo tutorials. We're finally here. We got the Subterra Maximum Crisis update, and I'm excited. Obviously, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I've been playing Subterra since day one, back when they just had Hidden City, Nemesis Warrior, Umastrix, and Stalagmo, and I've pretty much since then been trying to make them better and better with every set, but for the most part, the deck has stayed pretty much the same through the first three releases that they were in. With Maximum Crisis, things change a lot. This build is very different from what I posted before, and uh, that's really cool. I'm glad that Subterra's kind of did a 180. I mean, they still revolve around flip effects and big combos, but now there's a lot of other defensive points, and we got an awesome trap card, and it's all just so cool. I don't know. I'm excited. Let's just get right into it a second and start talking about these cards. The first card that we're going to look at here is we're playing three Subterra Fiendus. Now, this is obviously a three of staple. It's a part of not only most of your combos, but also your defensive um, boards because you want it in hand or on the field to be able to use the effect. Uh, obviously, the hand trap effect is going to be the important part of this, but I think a lot of people that don't play Subterras, what they're missing is that the revival effect is equally, if not more important than the hand trap one. One thing that Subterras have always struggled with is board wipes. They just couldn't beat them at all. Um, I believe Burrowing has like an effect to make them not die. I don't even know. Burrowing's fucking trash. But Subterra Phoenix lets you revive a card. You don't even need any other setup because you can just slip itself face down and uh, get back a guy from the grave. That's really important just for making sure your deck actually has steam um, in the later turns, not just the big first turn where you do a huge combo. Uh, next, we are playing three Subterra Nemesis Warrior. I see people that are inexperienced with the deck say they don't understand why everyone's playing three of this. Uh, basically, this card does everything. Uh, it dodges effects by sending stuff to the grave. It special summons itself every single turn. That's just stupid. Um, and what's important, too, is that a lot of times you can use a proactive effect like Stalagmo on your turn with a, and then end with a Nemesis Warrior that you revived. And then on your opponent's turn, you can pitch the Slagmo with the Warrior to get uh, Umastrix, which is more useful on your opponent's turn. And then when you flip the Umastrix face up with like the Subterra Trap card, you can special summon this from the grave again and then trade out the Umastrix when your turn comes around for a Stalagmo so you can draw some cards. And uh, it's just sort of cycling through the Subterras depending on whose turn it is and what your opponent's field is. And uh, that's why this guy is so good because it just cycles through cards really easily. Um, that's actually all the, um, non-behemoths I'm playing. We've cut Archer completely, and I know this is a controversial decision. Um, I'm not playing Zodiac cards in this deck. I felt like every time I played Zodiacs and Subterras, it was just a worse Zodiac deck. I want to, I just want to play Subterras, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, Archer is good in Zodiacs, I suppose, but... I just felt like it was too inconsistent. We tested on a really long live stream when these cards first leaked a whole bunch of variants, and uh, the Archer just didn't work out. You can play like True Kings, but then once again, you're just playing a worse True King deck. Um, but Archer was just really bricky most of the times and always like the worst normal summon because like a lot of the combos, you want to be normal summoning Nemesis, Warrior, or Fiendus, not really Archer. It just wasn't that good. I mean, if Archer, if you could pop Archer in your hand, oh man, then I would play it for sure. But as it stands... No Archer, for now. Um, we are playing three Umastrix. I, I don't think I've done this in a really long time. Um, but this card with the trap is like 10 out of 10 would flip the trap and banish cards again. Uh, but yeah, um Umastrix is definitely really important now. And then another thing I don't think I've done for a while, if ever, as I'm playing two Stalagmo. I know a lot of other people have been playing two Stalagmo for a while, but I always was under, under the impression that drawing cards was good, so I like playing three Stalagmo. But in this build, Umastrix is just clearly the more important one. Um, you always have ways to tutor out Stalagmo from your deck, so it's not really that big a deal or whatever. But Umastrix is just better for dealing with cards, so I want to play three of it. For the one-ofs, um, I am playing one of this guy. I'm not playing any funky combos with it, like with Glow Up Bulb. I know they're kind of cool, but they're sort of inconsistent, and I want to build this as consistent as possible. So we're just playing this one guy. Um, he normally is just sending Nemesis Warrior to the grave to set that up. Uh, and then also, I don't think I've played this guy before, uh, Ultra Mephist or whatever the guy's name is. Um, he's a Book of Eclipse, and I actually really like him now. I think with the, the trap card, he's actually pretty good. I, I never really liked him when you had to flip him up with, like, Prediction Princess guy, but... When you have like the trap card to flip the sky, he's pretty cool. That's it for the sub terrors. Uh, moving on, we have Predaplants, obviously. So we're going to be playing three Scorpio. 
one Cobra. These pretty much do whatever you need them to because they get to Invoker or Alucard, which can upgrade into Ghostric Angel. Um, then they search Brilliant or Instant Fusion, depending on what your hand requires. So I like these cards a lot. Um, and like I said in the mail opening video, you'll probably be seeing them in a lot of videos too because I just like their design. Um, we are playing the Brilliant Fusion, so we have Garnet and Trick Clown. Um, I suppose in a pinch, I think we have we have a Ghost Ogre that you could send, um, but mainly these two bricks, it's it's going to happen. Uh, but now, I mean, we have like six copies of Brilliant Fusion if you count the Scorpio, so you should see it like turn one all the time. Um, I am playing one Kink Bayou. Uh, a lot of people were mad at me for just playing one of this instead of just cutting it or playing two. But I think sometimes <laughs> I don't. I hate using the the sometimes you want to draw it, sometimes you don't want to draw it. Uh, thing, but you never want to see two of this card like ever. But it is pretty good mid game and late game as like a recovery for your recovery option. So I like it as a one of. That's just me though. Uh, for the hand traps, one maxi, obviously really powerful. One ghost ogre. We we already have Phoenix to sort of stop things. We don't really need uh, too much more than this. And uh, Slagmo can draw into these pretty easily. So yeah, just just the two right there. Uh, for the spells, we're looking at three. Hidden City, um, you pretty much need this for like every single combo just because of the uh, the flipping effect, it's too good. And because of that, we are playing three terraforming to search it out. You you really need Hidden City in like every single hand, so yeah. Sucks that I can't search spells and traps, so that would be really good, holy shit. Uh, we're also playing three Brilliant Fusion, like one of the best cards in the game, but also in the deck. Uh, I like this card a lot, obviously. But we are playing two Instant Fusion. This card has less targets or less uses than Brilliant Fusion, so we're only playing two. But if you already have the Brilliant Fusion and you have a Scorpio, you obviously are just going to search Instant Fusion, so you kind of have to play a second target for that. And then one Soul Charge for like those huge recovery plays, um, just getting back a, a whole bunch of things. You can see here the theme is really um, longevity with Subterras, where that wasn't the case beforehand. So we have a lot of cards to revive stuff. And then I'm playing one Subterra Cave Clash. I almost want to play two of this. In the live stream, we were playing two, and it, it did clog sometimes. But this card's really good with Phoenix, and you're also doing... Like, the damage before seemed kind of silly, but you, you gain a lot of attack points off of this, and you recover the Phoenix, and that's just really fucking good. So I definitely like this card now. Um, once again, I wish Hidden City could search Spells and Traps, because that'd make it a lot better, but it's whatever. We'll, we'll deal with what we have. Um, three Subterra Final Battle. Holy fucking shit. This card is actually like the nuts. It's the fucking tits, man. It's whatever you want to call it. Whatever stupid meme you want to say. This card is the best. Phoenix is obviously really good. It's it's the big playmaker. But this thing is so stupid. It just snowballs out of control. The fact that you can have multiples of them and just keep using effects. It's so stupid. Um, the effects that I use the most are the flipping effect. Obviously, I mean, that's that's what I was asking for for months. A ghost trick scare for sub terrors, but um, the the doubling attack and defense is actually the second one that I use the most. Um, so don't don't just ignore that. That's actually huge. I mean, all these sub terror guys. I think the lowest one would go to forty seven hundred um, attack and defense, and you can use that effect in the damage step too. So if they attack like a new monster, you can just flip this in the damage step, and they'll probably take like a million damage. So that's really cool. Anyway, thank God that card came out. We would have it would have been so good. The second been so good if you would imagine the Phoenix. And uh, Final Battle came out in the second set that sub chairs were in. Holy shit, that would have been great. Um, anyway, playing one Ghost Trick Scare, it's searchable. It's a lot more searchable than um, Final Battle, because you can't search Final Battle with anything. But the, you have a ton of ways to get to this that look in the extra deck. So if you can make a rank 1, or rank 3, or rank 4, you can add this card. So that's really cool. So just, just as a one-off. And you get two uses out of it, um, but I'll talk about that in a second. And then one Floodgate Trap Pull... Um, when you're going first, like I just like instant fusion into Rafflesia a lot. So like a lot of times in this deck, you can end with Rafflesia, Umastrix, Ghostrix Scare, and then the the Subterra Trap, and then usually Nemesis Warrior Engrave. So in that case, you can like you have like a Floodgate to flip something. You have the uh, the Subterra Trap to banish something with Umastrix, and then you have the Nemesis Warrior effect to swap out for Ultra Mephist, which you can use the Ghostrix Scare to flip up. Um, and that's sort of like the, the strategy. So you have like a bunch of different ways to stop your opponent's plays. It's actually pretty cool. Um, for the extra deck, we have one MX Saber Invoker. This is usually what you're going into with the Scorpio because it gets Nemesis Warrior. Um, pretty standard card right there that I've been playing since day one. 
But uh, for the Ghost Tricks, we're playing one Ghost Trick Dulahan, which you can summon off a two Phoenix or a Phoenix and a Kinkabayu. This is the main reason that I wanted to play the Kinkabayu, by the way. By the way just have a one card Dulahan. Um, one Ghost Trick Alucard, card, which you make with Scorpio. And then those can rank up in an Angel of Mischief that searches Ghost Trick Scare. And then when you detach either one of the little Ghost Tricks from Angel, you can add back the Ghost Trick Scare. So you actually get two uses out of it, like I was saying. Um, so that's really good, because then you have just so much momentum. Um, we also have King of the Feral Imps, Search You Mastrix, Rafflesia for the Floodgate, Dweller, because some people do play Dinos. Even though they underperformed at the last YCS, they're pretty popular at like, regionals and stuff, so definitely got to play that. Uh, Emerald for recycling things. Castell, um, pretty good. I would probably play Tornado Dragon over this, but I don't actually have a Tornado Dragon yet, so we're playing Castell for now. And then uh, Utopia, um, this is just for dealing with big stuff. Although, I found myself not needing this card as often just because of the uh, Subterra Trap. Um, increases your attack points, but it's whatever. And then uh, one Gustav Max. I do like just finishing off the game with this. Obviously, you're only playing two Stalag one now, so it's a little harder to make, so we're not playing any other um, rank 10s, but it's it's good for closing games. And then for the other stuff, we have Norden, and then the Invoked guy. Um, if you just have Instant Fusion and a bunch of Behemoths, you can special summon them all from your hand by summoning this and flipping it face down. Uh, pretty standard. People did it last set. I just was slow on that one. But uh, yeah, those are the instant fusion targets, and then just the Gem Knight Seraphonite for brilliant fusion. And uh, yeah, that is that is everything. That is sub terrors with the new the new shit. It's so good. It's it's a lot of fun. I probably have some other versions of the deck. I know I said that last time that I never delivered, but this time I'm pretty sure I will have other versions. So be watching out for that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will see you later. Bye.